right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Flax. I am a new technical services specialist with uh, Ball Seed Tech Team. Um, and I'm joined today by James Dukas, one of our territory managers. Uh, he's up in the Northeast and Great Lakes um, for Ball Floor Plant and Selecta. Uh, he does a lot of work with poinsettias, uh, works with a lot of different growers. And we're going to talk today about strategies for holding poinsettias because uh, we've been getting a lot of calls recently. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of questions, you know, uh, regarding how do we slow our crops down. A lot of growers are really far ahead of schedule in some parts of the uh, United States. Um, so uh, we're going to discuss some different strategies that you all can use to slow down and hold your crops. Make sure that they're still looking pristine uh, by the time by the time you're shipping them out the door. So, uh, James. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, we have been traveling up and down. Uh, you guys might be more familiar with Gary Vollmer from Selecta as the resident poinsettia guru. I was with him last week and we kind of headed down from Jersey down to uh, North Carolina, actually, where I handed him off and he's uh, traveling the Southeast. So you're, you're stuck with me, unfortunately, now. <laughs> um, but we can say that we've talked to other people in Canada, whether you're talking British Columbia, Ontario, uh, the West Coast uh, in California, Colorado, and even our friends over across the pond, um, pretty much the Northern Hemisphere is ahead in poinsettias, anywhere on average five to 10 days in color. Some people are actually ahead on mid-season varieties uh, by as much as two weeks. Wow. So we have a lot of poinsettias looking great, um, but our shipping windows are you know later in the season and throughout the season. So we thought it was a good time now to kind of talk about some holding strategies for poinsettias to make sure that we, you know, this beautiful poinsettia adds up in the store and in somebody's house. All right. Well, and again, we're very grateful to have you on here today. Thank you for your time. And uh, so let's let's dig into a couple of different a uh, couple of different ways that growers can slow down and hold their crops. Um, can we talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, temperature related strategies first here. Yeah, I mean, the easiest thing, of course, in any crop is to turn down the temperature uh, for the greenhouse, right? Really, what we want to do is slow the progression of the poinsettias. So we want to turn down our ADTs. Um, and the safest way to turn down your ADT naturally is to turn down your day temperature, right? And that, the reason why I say that's the safest way is because that's when your humidity in your greenhouse is generally going to be a non-issue and you're not going to have an issue of turning down the temperature and hitting dew point during the day on most days, right? On a cloudy, rainy day, you still might have that issue if you turn down too far, all right? But also when, it, of course, talking about an average daily temperature, we want to turn down our night temperatures as well, right? But we don't want to turn them down, again, to be mindful of the dew point that we allow the warm, moist air to cool down in our greenhouse and then create fog or uh, moisture sitting on top of our nice bracts. So, you know, there's a, not only do we want to turn down the temperature, we want to make sure that we don't hit dew point. And if you're unfamiliar with how to kind of get, uh, uh, really to uh, uh, calculate when you will hit dew point, given your relative humidity and temperatures, we do have a, a, a little bit more of a fact sheet with a dew point calculator uh, to use for growers uh, and links uh, going along with this presentation. Um, at the same time, uh, we wanna make sure that when we go to bed uh, and go into the night, we wanna cool down the greenhouse now and evacuate as much of the air as possible and get that warm air that's been building up as the plants have been just transpiring throughout the day out of the greenhouse and also we don't want all that warm air to hold all that moisture as we go into the night. So we want to cool down the greenhouse as well as do some air exchanges to get uh, increase some ventilation at that time to get all that moisture and relative humidity out of the air. And uh, in turn, that way we can run safely a cooler night temperature uh, without the issue of things, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, sitting uh, and creating condensating on the bracts. Um, also a good point, and at this time of year, it's imperative that we do all irrigations during the day or as early as possible, okay? And, and if you guys are in a situation where you're doing overhead, um, this is imperative because we don't want that moisture sitting on top of the uh, bracts, right? 
So that's where we want to get through at this point. Um, make sure that we're being mindful of when we irrigate. Um, but it's not just temperatures uh, and moisture management and relative humidity management that we should be thinking about and employing when we're this far ahead and we're trying to hold our crop. Now, so James, what is, I, I've gotten a couple of questions from growers the last couple of weeks uh, on specific temperatures to target for day temp and night temp. What, as far as not, 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 even, not even talking about dew point, what is the, what is a, a general range for like lowest safe temperatures that you can run during the day uh, and night or, or the lowest safe ADT that you can, uh, that you can run in your greenhouse to help hold the points that is? I, as a former grower, I can't really make a good safe blanket statement because in every situation, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, if you're in an arid environment, you can get away with a lower night temperature and day temperature um, because you're, you, you don't have as much moisture in the air to begin with, right? But if you're in a uh, more of a Northeast or a Great Lakes sort of climate, uh, you do have that humidity factor still into the later part of, a, um, uh, of the fall, right? And especially, I think pretty much a storm has gone across most of North America this week. And then we got some things coming up from uh, remnants of hurricanes still kicking around in the Southeast. Uh, so, you know, a safe range, uh, you know, you, you can get things down uh, to 55, but in most situations, a night temperature is going to be somewhere in the range of a 58 to 62. Now, be mindful, if you're going down to 58, you're playing into Petritus's uh, wheelhouse. So that's why it's so important that you manage the humidity within your greenhouse. Um, you can, you know, these are, are why I don't want to be boxed in by saying, you know, this is the ultimate safe temperature. Well, again, it, it really has to do with your environment and the humidity and moisture that you have in your air around you when you hit those lower temperatures. Okay, thank you. So the short answer for everyone out there, it depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, growers, you, 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 it always depends on your environment and your equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so that that pretty well covers what uh, what growers can do um, uh, with respect to changing uh, air temperatures. Again, being mindful of humidity. Um, what's you know? So the other the other real uh, option in the grower toolbox is uh, PGRs. So what? Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about PGR use for holding poinsettias. And, and I want to clarify, you know, when we're talking about holding poinsettias, we're talking about holding a finished crop, all right? We're not spraying B9 this late. We're not spraying psychosil this late, because then that can also get in a situation where we're uh, going to be darkening up our bracts. And even with what we're recommending that you uh, at least pursue, if you're far ahead, uh, with a pack of butrazole or a bonsai drencher spray, is you're going to have, and even in your reds, they're going to get a little bit darker on your brack color. That might not be advantageous in some of these whites because your whites might become a little bit creamier, right? But a creamier white is still a white that we're selling and it's not a plant that we're losing. So we got to pick our poison here and do what's best to make sure our crop goes out the door. Um, so really bonsai in this sort of holding spray uh, it, or drench, right? We can do a one to two part drench, uh, which is relatively high rate for a drench. So you got to make sure that you're doing it when you want no more color progression. All right. And that, that is really key. Um, this is to be done as a finishing PGR when things are finished, not when they're almost there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause you will get at this, you know, these rates on a poinsettia, you will get no more color progression. No more. I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. Um, or yeah. a, you know, a five to 10 part spray. Some, some situations when you're not on drip, for example, a spray might be easier for you to apply. Yeah, you know, and remember folks, general, general recommendations for PGR drenches for just for managing growth throughout the season, are like that 0.15 part per million to a quarter part per million. So, you know, one to two parts per million is four, you know, four to eight times or more 
that rate, just, just to slow them down a little bit. And depending on varieties, for those of you who have done this before, you you know, you, you know how, how much it can put the brakes on them. So a one to two part per million is a dead stop. Yeah, yeah we're slamming on the brakes. We're slamming on the brakes. So you, you better be sure that you want the brakes to be slammed. And remember for application rates for drenches, uh, general best practices are one fluid ounce per inch of container diameter. And then you add an additional fluid ounce for each additional stem. So uh, a, a great example James used earlier today when we were talking about this is uh, if you're doing a three, uh, an eight inch pot with, uh, with three, uh, three liners per pot, you would do eight fluid ounces for the eight inches of container diameter and then add two fluid ounces for the additional two cuttings that were that were planted into that pot. So 10 fluid ounces total. And that can be scaled down or up for different container sizes. You know, if you're doing, you know, the cute little four inches or if you're doing bigger ones. Um, mm -hmm. It's really important that you're getting an appropriate amount of active ingredient in there so that all, all of the plants, if it's multiple plants per pot, are taking up enough to actually fully just bring them to a stop. Yep, totally. Um, and then, you know, we have a little bit of guidance on when we should be applying this, right? It's not just full color, but you can also, um, if we advance the timing, like I said, is critical in this. So we really like to uh, be mindful of our cyathea and just go there and, and in layman's terms, you know, when you start to see the fish lips put on some pollen, that's when we're applying this, right? But that's why I make this point is just because you see it at one part of your greenhouse, actually go look and confirm at the other part of your greenhouse. As we know in our situations, in our facilities, temperatures and microclimates do exist. And you know, one thing might be ready one day, the other thing, another group might not be ready for another three or four days, right? It not, might not be all advanced as far, right? Um, but you really want to do this sort of slamming on the brakes once your bracts are fully expanded or colored. And that and keep it as simple as that. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, that pretty much covers everything we were going to talk about today. Again, just temperature, environmental, and uh, PGR strategies for holding down, uh, holding poinsettia crops that are a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, check out our Tech On Demand tech tip. Uh, that'll have a little bit more details on, you know, some of the specifics that we talked about today and uh, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, you all will have success uh, using temperature and PGRs to bring these, bring these crops to a, a to a final holding point um, so that, so that you have really just, you know, excellent quality uh, crops that you're shipping out the door when it comes time to ship. Yeah. Nothing beats a point set of crop. That's nothing but concrete. Because that means it all shipped. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much once again, James. And we will see you all uh, on the next, uh, next video. <laughs>